cannot turn the camera around until Aaron is not naked because we both just showered and he has commanded that I can start the live but I cannot point it in the direction that it's usually pointed in because he's going to be naked so don't 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 blame me you only are doing it because you don't want to lose your YouTube channel that's not it true tens of thousands that's of not true I don't care about the YouTube channel, obviously. All right, show my balls right now on stream. Do it. Show my balls right now. <laughs> you wouldn't do it. Vanita, you win first. Congratulations. You win nothing. But first. the idea of being first. Um, welcome again to a second live stream of the day. We are also lucky to be gathered here yet again in the company of friends and strangers and trolls and uh... Which one am I? Uh, it's trolls. Aaron is a troll. I need to resuscitate some of my chives that I need to use for a recipe. I bought these. I didn't wash them. They've just been dehydrating in the fridge. Um, I also need to eat some vegetables because I realized that the reason why my period might be so bad this cycle is because I've only been eating chips at these parties. Um, and actually fried food, like chips, have a history of making my cramps very, very bad. So we're going to eat some vegetables. Um, I did end up walking to the park. I did end up grilling with Aaron briefly. And I did end up scaring a couple of people by ranting about how, uh, lab tech meat, like Impossible and Beyond, aren't really good. But... You know. also said something about how we're all fucked and there's no hope. Right, but if you invite me to any sort of party, Aaron, I'm... I, I, I don't care. Fine. Alright, well, if Aaron doesn't care. Um, but first, I would like to show you my two thrifted items of the day. So, the part of Prospect Park that Aaron's party was at was a 30-minute walk from my favorite thrift store in the city, which is the Flatbush branch of La Pointe Value. And they used to have $1 racks, but due to COVID and passage of time and inflation, the cheapest items that are existing there right now are $3, which are still quite a steal. So, let me show you the two things that I bought. And uh, it's so funny because I got there like half an hour before their closing time and then 10 minutes within me arriving there, they started turning the lights off one by one to like try to encourage people to get the fuck out. And I was like, I really wanted to leave some leave with something today and I didn't have anything in my hand and I was like, do I want this shirt that has a slight stain on it that is 100% silk but also men's and extremely huge? I guess I can wear it as a dress. And as I was debating this, I saw a cute little short sleeve sweater and then after that, um, I felt very like happy that I found something that I actually want and could wear that uh, I proceeded to go to another rack with my five remaining minutes and I found a silk shirt that would actually fit me. So for a grand total of six dollars today, let me show you my haul. Isn't it cute? It's so cute. It's like knitwear, so it's got little tiny holes in it. Um, and it is called, it's called Cuddle Knit. And it is made in USA, so you know it's vintage. Because it's fucking made in USA and nothing is made in USA anymore. It's 100% cotton. And it was $3. So, very amazing find. I'm going to love wearing it. I'm not afraid to wash it in a little bit of a warm water and give it a tumble dry because it's fine if it shrinks a little. Um, and then, this is a silk shirt. It's a Telbots Petite shirt, size 14, quite big, complete with shoulder pads which I probably will remove, yes. I just don't don't like the feeling of shoulder pads even though they are great. It is 100% silk and it's made in Hong Kong and this was also $3. It is a button-down shirt 
with um, white buttons on the sleeves and white buttons down the middle and the fun thing about this shirt is it comes with a necktie. Look at that! So I can tie myself into a little bow tie or I can do my signature thing and wear the shirt back to front, which I tend to do. So I'm very excited to give these a wash and wear them for reals. Um, this dress is my mother's. This was my mother's dress. It is very figure flattering. It makes me look like I have boobs to show. Um, and it's like a very well tailored dress and that you can twirl and it actually gives you the twirl. So thank you mom for the lovely dress and uh, let's make some vegetables, yeah? We love a veg. or not but two bundles of super skinny pencil uh, asparagus for 150 at dollar and up what a steal and they're quite tender still really so you know oh I should wash this first let me wash it maybe I should trim it ah, mm, I'll wash it and then I'll trim it No joke, when I found the sweater, I was like, man, mom would love this sweater. And I was like, hmm, did mom just give me a sweater because she saw that I was very sad and deflated for not finding something? I love these moments where I just like weave narratives that my mom is still somehow like orchestrating certain details in my life. It's nice. It's like self-soothing, you know? I'm under no illusion that she's probably 100% dead and gone, but... It's still nice to have a little bit of a fairy tale going for myself as a treat, existentially. You know, as they say, treat yourself. Sometimes you gotta make the lies work for you. Vancouver Island. I just learned that not everyone can smell asparagus pee, and I learned that some people actually have a gene that can have them process the asparagus in such a way that their pee doesn't smell like asparagus pee. We are all snowflakes, y'all. to have your laptop right by the sink as you're spraying down vegetables. Like, extremely so. It smells kind of worse than asparagus. It smells extremely concentrated.
you'll be lucky if you can't smell it. Yes, happy Tuesday. It's a very weird work week for me because I have basically flipped the amount of days I have off and the amount of days I will be working. I have basically five consecutive days off, two days working, and then I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off again. Um, and you know, it's like, I have nothing else to do with my PTO besides to take one day here off and there. And this is my little staycation of sorts. I guess, blessed, as the kids say. Oh, uh, that first episode of Budget Eats shot on my cell phone. I had a puppy named Tom. Tom was not my puppy. We were just fostering Tom uh, temporarily because his owner had COVID. And um, his owner needed someone to take care of him while he was in the hospital. And as soon as his owner recovered, Tom went back to his owner and the reunion was one of the sweetest fucking things I've ever witnessed in my life. Um, Tom the dog was possibly my favorite dog I've m ever met. He was just so sweet and gentle and didn't really make a fuss unless he heard the other dog down the hall bark and then he got really worked up. Um, such a sweetie. And uh, when his owner came to pick him up, we took him downstairs he like got so excited and just basically sprung to his owner. Um, and then the cutest thing, after he had like his minute, two minutes of freaking out over the return of his owner, he ran back to me and jumped on my calves and like basically I think thanked me and then ran back to his owner. I miss that puppy. I hope he's doing well. I'm just chopping a lot of garlic here because you gotta have garlic and then salt, pepper, and lemon with asparagus. And unfortunately the best way to do asparagus in my opinion is to roast it in the oven but I really don't want to turn on my oven. So we're just kind of gonna saute steam it in the pot because I'm lazy. Ah oh well. What will be will be. Hi Serbia. But it was really exhausting taking care of Tom, like walking him three, four times a day was no joke. Um, but at least it got me out 
That was during the first wave of COVID when things were really serious. Um, and people were like dying left and right. So the tensions were high and I was scared to go outdoors, but because I had a dog to take care of, he was the reason why I ever breathed any outdoor air. Ooh, asparagus in the air fryer. That sounds good too. Should we do a batch of air fryer asparagus? Yes. Okay, Aaron says yes. I think what I'll do is I'll break the asparagus in half and we can air fry the tender spearheads. And then I'll saute the ends. And what's gonna happen is Aaron's gonna eat all the spearheads and I'm just going to eat my nasty steamed fried ends. Um, what's my review for the top? It, it works. It's not as good as a standalone Unitasker air fryer simply because um, in order to get things crispy you need to use a dehydrator tray and it fits the six quart pot which is already very small in terms of surface area so you don't really get to fit that much in it but a lot of air fryers are kind of small surface area wise anyway so you know if you don't have the space for another appliance and you really want to try an air fryer, I think it's fine. Just use a dehydrator tray. But if you have the space for another appliance and you really think you're going to use it very often, then just get another standalone air fryer with a slightly bigger surface area so you can cook more stuff at one time. Because the thing about air fryers is like, if you lay stuff on top of each other too much, it's not going to get crispy, right? And it's not... If it's not crispy, it doesn't taste fried. So, trade-offs everywhere. I was very sad in the last video. You know, it's normal. I took a three-hour walk ate some stuff, popped another ibuprofen in, and went to the thrift store and did things and said, fuck work, <laughs> fuck responsibilities, which is such a nice luxury to not care about work. Um, takes a lot of privilege and untraining to get to, and uh, you know, having some sort of like a financial stability in the back of your mind doesn't hurt either but I am lucky enough to be there. So I am trying to train myself to not really worry about work that much because it does not deserve that much of my life. Can you roast seeds in the air fryer? It does like blow things around a lot, so I'm not sure. I got the air fryer lid because work wanted me to do videos with air fryer and I was like, y'all, I really don't have any space in my apartment anymore. So I was like, just give me a lid. At least it's only a lid and not a whole machine. 
Aaron was very angry when I got it. And I was like, it was my job. annoying but that's the point I think matter of scale right like for someone like me who's worked minimum wage before and has survived in a city like New York City and I know that I can do it I don't need very much to actually exist some people need more of an existence than the one that I lead and so financial security means a different thing to them obviously your mileage may vary I think I am financially secure for what I need reading yeah. was that in the early part of the pandemic or before uh, right well I'm not the boss of you you can stay up as long as you like my lady The menu tonight is asparagus. All asparagus all night long. I bought it. I bought two bunches for 150 together total, and uh, we're gonna make it because if I don't, then I will never eat it. It's 2011. Holy shit! We're so old.
was gifted by my mom's coworker um, to grandma. So I'm gonna let it ripen a little bit more and then I'm gonna cut it up for grandma. I mean, she also told me that she wants me to have some too. She's very sweet. You can juice the peel of pineapple. Hmm. It's what? It's just asparagus, salt, garlic, and oil. I don't know why you sneezing though. Freddie, you're sitting weird. What would you like to say to the people? Vote for Trump? <laughs> Freddie! True. Smells oh, good, too. Garlic, it can't not smell good. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's making me a sneeze. You sure it's not the salad? I think we could add a little or a lot of chili pepper to that. Well, okay. this is my batch. You're gonna I think get we could add a lot of chili pepper. Maybe just uh, 10 to 20 cups of chili pepper. A little chili pepper! Alright, Aaron, thank you. <laughs> okay. My lord. any day over my own. Not lying. It just so happens that I'm the one who has to make food for a living. So I do it for work. And pleasure. But I think Aaron has more of a uh, natural talent for making flavors work that I am sort of lacking on. I am like creative in the sense of making edible things, but he's got flavors down pat.
easy boy today. Really can't be the asparagus, can it? Here are the tips. ninth grade. Oh, I do want to see a grown man eat four Chipotle burritos in under 15 minutes. Are we going to go to your channel now? who this guy is, but if you want to see people eat Chipotle burritos in under 15 minutes, you know where to be on Saturday. Put the rest of the air fryer ensemble. Ah, here you are. Those of 
you who are curious, this is what comes with the air fryer top. You basically have an insert, and this is the dehydrator tray. You can put stuff in the lower level, but the stuff on top of this dehydrator tray will get crispier. in some oil. The air fryer works best if you oil stuff up. And don't worry, whatever oil is in that bowl, I will eat out of. watch you eat all four burritos because I just feel like eating that amount of food in under 15 minutes takes the joy out of the experience for me and it really kind of like grosses me out as a human being to be H. But girl, whatever you want to do, I support you. Just make sure it makes you happy. lives ago that was like I enjoy your videos but when you don't check your comments and aren't responding it's very boring or unentertaining or I don't know what the wording was but like my whole thing is like I guess you must have missed the 10 episodes where I was like, I'm not doing this for you guys. I'm doing it because I, my therapist told me to 
be more social and so I went parasocial because we still had a pandemic and like my mom was watching it so I did it for her so that she could see what I was doing in my life and like I was processing my grief so I put it on but you know just a reminder it's not a democracy Cooking it to hell because I like it crispy. Okay, so I think I told you guys that I got invited to a free dinner at a place that was a tasting menu that cost, it cost something like $350 for a tasting menu plus $250 for wine, so like six to $700 meal. Um, I got invited to that. I did not pay for it. It was comped because my friend who works for The New Yorker got invited to it and they very reluctantly accepted her request to have a plus one. She was like, if I can't have a plus one, then I'm not going to attend. So they gave her a plus one. And then when we got there, we found out why they were so reluctant to give her a plus one. But in any case, as you know, tasting menu foods come on huge plates, three to four bites. Um, it was good. I would probably not pay that much money Aaron asked me how much I would have paid. I think I would have comfortably paid maximum $200 for the experience just to have it once in my life to like know what it feels like to sit at a table where people can pay that much. People on either side of us were paying. They got served checks at the end of the night. And to know that there are people who can afford to pay that much for a single meal is astounding when you think about it, because my mom wouldn't even spend over $600 on a laptop and her work depended on it. Freevo, correct. 
and um, just to put that scale of expense into perspective, my mom probably didn't even want to spend that much money on heating bills for the entire winter, which uh, breaks my heart. She certainly, I think, could have managed to spend a little more on herself. But coming from that background, knowing that that's how my mom spent her money, six to seven hundred dollars on a single meal is unimaginable to me. I will say that the most interesting experience or moment of the night for me happened mentally where I was trying to piece together what it meant for me to have worked minimum wage $10 per hour jobs in restaurants. And then to have had that experience where a chef told me that as a cook, in order to develop my palate, I had to go out and eat more, even though I was being paid minimum wage with no paid time off and no health insurance and nothing. Paying rent in New York City and being told by your chef that you have to eat out at restaurants where a meal could easily run 60 to $80 per person, even without drinks. Um, that was back in 2013, 2014. Now, I don't even know how much it would cost to eat out. And then to be sitting on the other side of this table watching cooks who might or might not be making above minimum wage now, putting together all these extravagant dishes that takes days to finesse and using tweezers to plate everything and having these little moist towelettes to wipe off the stains on the plate to make sure every single design is perfect. It was just so surreal and surreal and unreal that we live in a place that has this kind of luxury when people are sleeping on the street. Who knows eating what? So there is an intrinsic sense of guilt that came through me as I sat there eating this lavish meal, recognizing that I am of the privileged social class now who has, if not actual financial capital to spend this way or psychological capital to spend this way, that I have some sort of social capital to be gaining entrance into these stadiums of sorts. Um, so that was one facet of it. And I'm sure I will keep digesting this, kind of regurgitating it and ruminating it like a cow of what this experience meant for me. But I also remember a distinctively tasting my food slower. One, because the bites were so small. <laughs> and two, because the timing between each course was so long that it forced me to take smaller bites, to pay more attention to the plating, the look, the smell, the textures. What up, dude? Um, and I guess that's what people mean when they mean mindful eating. And so it also made me think about my disordered eating and the various evolutions of my disordered eating throughout the years. And it made me wonder if I should be doing more of slower eating. Of course, yesterday at my friend's party, all I did was jam handfuls of chips down my throat, and then I came back and I ate half a bag of almonds without even thinking about it. Cheers. And I just kept eating raisins dipped in sunflower seed butter, which are all delicious. But like, how quickly it was for me to resort back to my disordered eating comfort. All food for thought. Thank you for interrupting again, Aaron. Ah. Ooh, asparagus. Yes. <sighs> oh, God. I'm so sneezy. I'm so sneezy. Vancouver. I was full at the end because a lot of the food was very fatty. There was a lot of like nutrient dense and 
heavy stuff. And everything was delicious, so I was very satisfied, and I was actually full. I wouldn't say I was stuffed, but I was definitely 10% past satiated. So it was a very good amount of food, and also every single course came with a wine pairing, so I was kind of like blasted at the end too. Um, But it was a fascinating experience, and the whole time I was like, I'm not rich enough to be here, haha. -ha. <laughs> and I looked, um, my friend was sat next to a couple of dudes who were Chinese. There were a lot of Asians on this particular night too. We were, we, we were, we were asking the staff, like, is it always this much Asians? But he said it depends. But she chatted up the two dudes to her left, and they were very friendly, um, and they even treated us to a glass of special champagne that they had ordered off the menu for themselves, so who knows Who knows how much that glass cost. I finished it. I didn't finish all the glasses, but I finished that glass because I was like, if they, I just, I just don't know, man. Like, <sighs> and then I look over to my right, and it's this pair of diners. They don't talk to each other the whole time, and I see the lady to my immediate right, kind of like in my peripheral vision, I see her staring at me every time I'm pulling out my phone and taking a photo or taking a video of the staff, the kitchen, it's an open kitchen in front of us. And I don't hear her say anything to her partner, her dining partner. And at the very end, after she signs the check, I finally quickly glance to confirm that like they were actually talking to each other and I catch a little bit of their conversation and it's like yeah it was so nice to eat with you and meet with you and it was like very very like rote pleasantries exchange and I it just made me wonder like who are these two people who are dining together at this place I mean maybe they didn't come together who knows maybe they were each paying for their own I'm not sure But it's so weird. I wouldn't want to pay $600 to eat this by myself, or would I? I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it because I can't pay $600 for a meal. It's just really ludicrous because I don't even go to the doctor because I'm, a, I'm scared of sticker shock. Um, no joke, I don't go to the doctor even though I have a health insurance because in the past when I have gone to doctors that is beyond my yearly checkup physical that is included in my premium everything else has led me to pay two to six hundred dollars in copay or you know like deductible so I'm just like I'm not mentally prepared for that sticker shocks so I don't go to doctors anymore who knows maybe I will just die in my 60s like my mom but um it's a lot to take in hi Fred Hey, buddy. Do you think $600 is too much to spend on a meal? No? Wow. Fred tells you to vote for Trump and spend $600 on a meal. That's the kind of cat I have. And still you eat through the trash. Aaron, come eat your asparagus. Baby? This? Yeah, and you can have some of that too, but let me put some lemon on it first. Run out of room. Run out. You want to use this? It has olive oil, extra olive oil on it? Or do you want your yes. own bowl? That. Yes. Okay. Very salty. Uh oh. You didn't skip on the salt to this. No. Maybe Morton's is too salty. I need to adjust. But hold on, let me give you lemon juice. Can you dump it in your. Oh, you're scared of the heat. Right, I forgot. 
You want your garlic cloves, I'm assuming, yeah? I didn't come here to be insulted. You didn't pay for this, either. Did you hear that? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> hear what? I'm not gonna repeat it. A gaslighting master over here. Crispy? Gummy? Garlic? See? And then we do a squeeze of limon and chili pepper, please. And let me give you, well, why don't you eat this first and then I'll give you some of this. This right. isn't too salty, so if you need, mm. we can put some of this in there. Right. To make it less Wait, I don't want to take all of your air fryer. There's some stuff. on the bottom, but you got the crispiest layer because mm -hmm. I know you want the crispiest layer. I like the crispiest layer. Are you going to taste it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it good? Yeah. It's good. Good. I'm glad it's good. It's too salty, but it's good. Do you want some lemon zest? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here. Put some of this in there. Mix it a little bit. Garlic. Yeah, you can take all the garlic. I don't mind. But it's good for you. Okay, well, leave me one then, okay? Okay. Thank you. You got enough lemon? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Okay, but bye. But especially Frank. my lemon seeds um but you know like that sounds like the same experience I have with my pepper seeds they grow they flower and then the flowers just fall off before they fruit which is fine Take the branch of the pepper plant just above the bloom. Fascinating. Oh, tap. Tap the branch. Tap it? 
I don't. Boop, 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 boop. Please, fruit. <laughs> Tap it. Please, fruit. Is that a thing? I don't know. I think I just knocked off a flower. Maybe I was too rough. Hello, Mexico. Lemon garlic asparagus is classic, my mans. Um, also, a little bit of Parmesan will make it amazing, too. Six hundred per person, correct. Well, if you took it without the wine pairing, it would have been like four hundred, I think. The wine pairing is two hundred extra, two hundred something extra. Um, The doctor does get annoyed if you bring up concerns about costs. I've asked doctors before, do you have a ballpark of what the copay for this might be? And they're like, we really don't know. And that's just how opaque the whole system is for healthcare. They don't know because it's like this guessing game of like, we're going to bill you for this much, but your insurance can only pay us for this much. And then sometimes they make you pay the rest and sometimes they don't. We actually got a backpack that Fred can go on walks with us in where he has like a little plastic window he can stare out of. He didn't seem to love it. We only took him out to our like backyard garbage area and he was fine and quiet for the most part but I think slightly terrified. And then about four minutes into the backyard scroll stand kind of combo he was like Meow. and then we were like okay we'll go back in. This is the outside. Oh my god, so crunchy. Guys, the the bottoms don't get crunchy, but the tip tops get so crunchy. Mmm, wearing the cat backpack in front. Okay, I'll give that a try. Once in a while, he wants to go out.
Lala has not met Fred, and I don't think she would want to. She keeps saying cats have diseases. It's like a very Chinese mentality. Old Chinese mentality, I should say. Crime is always up. You know why crime is up? Because Eric fucking Adams is making life harder for everyone. It's not that people want to commit crime, it's that they have to commit crime to get what they need to survive. And Eric Adams is taking the basic necessities people need to get by. Oh wait, he's been arresting ladies selling cut up mangoes in the subway. Uh, how do you define crime? And at what point does a crime become violent? And where does violent crime come from? Are they getting fed? Are they having health care? Do they have shelter? Or are they all just going insane, not because of genetics or personal choice, but because of a society that doesn't care for any part of their well-being? I don't know if the rat situation is as bad everywhere in New York City, but I do feel like I've seen a lot of rats getting run over these days, and I've never seen it before. So it's probably true that it has been escalating. There are certain areas like Prospect Heights that have always had a very bad rat problem. I don't know what's up with those neighborhoods, but the rats are fearless and they will run out straight into the street and scare the living day crap out of me. we have before our world descends into the purge which is a movie I've never seen but I feel like I don't need to see it to know what goes on in it You see his little butt there? It's time for another brew of our ginger tea, y'all. maintain this instant pot as well as my energy levels can allow me to because this after all is one of the things that mom left behind. I do treat them with more special attention.
enjoy the ginger tea, but it's also for my menstrual cramps. Uh, ginger tea is one of the few like natural remedies that actually alleviate pain. Um, besides like ibuprofen and sometimes weed helps too. I don't know, would you consider weed a natural remedy? Probably. <laughs> When I have colds, mom used to um, take an Asian pear and she would cut it up, boil it in water, and add a little bit of uh, crystal sugar to it. That's also really good for if you're sick. Guys, you know how uh, insane my grief has gone is we're on the last roll of mom's toilet paper because mom had hoarded all of this toilet paper. And uh, obviously Aaron and I use a lot more toilet paper per wipe than mom probably ever did. Um, and we are on the last roll now. And I'm just staring at the roll every time I take my serving of toilet paper. Just with this like heaviness in my throat. Over toilet paper, y'all. <laughs> My God. I will eat my asparagus with my fonio and my beans. Cheers, Mom. This was her uh, bowl that she would always use during meals. Pretty, huh? Uruguay, all I think of is beauty pageants like Miss World or Miss Universe. Why do we lose, why do we have a Miss Universe? Like we don't have a Miss Mars. switching up my workloads. I think I just put it on myself a lot of the times. Um, but also, nobody really has control at Delish over bigger things, and that's really what weighs me down more. Unfortunately, I'm figuring out that all of media is kind of the same. It's not just Delish, it's not just hers, it's everywhere. Everything, all at once. Baby, what you doing here? Just staring. 
Is he just staring? Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy your um, veggies? Yes, excellent. Really, you did really, really well. Good. Thank you. We are live, Kendra. Welcome. No, we're not. This is pre-recorded. You can believe me, or you can believe Aaron. Kendra, this isn't live right now. It's pre-recorded. We got the crunchies. We got the mush. Crunchy mush. Hello, Kendra. I am happy you enjoy the live. I, for one, really enjoyed watching beauty pageants. Are they aired anymore? I guess because of COVID, they've had to pause it, maybe. Are they coming back? I know they're like, upholding toxic beauty standards and like very you know misogynistic i guess Didn't rupaul's drag race just become like the modern beauty pageant i don't know i never watch rupaul's though maybe i should but uh i don't know some of the stuff is just so dumb and i love it it's like watching living barbies you can fascinating watch a living barbie suit when margot robbie and ryan gosling yes. Do we have any sweet treats? I think I'm gonna have almonds and honey. Yeah, I don't know if we have sweet treats. We don't have sweet fruit. treats. Oh, should we have a tamarind candy? Yeah. Oh, you also have your uh, red bean bun. Right. Well, you also have cherry jam and brioche. But we don't have cookies, if that's what you're asking. Tamarind. Balls. My coworker Lena got that for me from her trip to the Oh! Pages. Very good. I'm gonna finish this first. Okay. You enjoy. Is there a pit? Mm -hmm. Okay, be careful. Yep. Delicious. Thanks, Lena. Lena is the recent one to quit Delish. She was my biggest ally on the food team. And it was very sad. That is also contributing to my impending doom. We have lost so many people. Honestly, if they ever air pageants again, I would go back on Twitch and do like a live stream of watching beauty pageants together. <laughs> reacts. June reacts to beauty pageants. Would you watch? We were gonna name the oat hut after Freddy. I don't even think Freddy likes oats. I guess that doesn't matter, right? We can just capitalize off of his name and his likeness because we owe him we own him like humans own everything uh lena quit hers didn't fire her but hers did fire three people because of budget reasons. They are not allowed to um, lay off people without consulting the union first, and they did that. So we filed for an unfair labor practice. Hearst has been breaking all of the labor laws since we unionized. We've basically filed three ULPs, unfair labor practices. The first one was because they held anti-union uh, captive audience meetings, which is completely illegal, but every single company and corporation does it. Amazon does it. Um, 
I don't know, Walmart probably does it if they ever unionize, that they always all do it, but. Want some almonds? I'm good. Um, I donated um, 200 bucks to a drive that we're doing to raise funds for the folks who were laid off because Honestly, when I got the email about the people being laid off, the wording was so imprecise that I thought that like everybody under Hearst Magazines got laid off. And like- That's funny. The initial shock that was like, wait, am I laid off? And the kind of innate reaction of like, trap door beneath you has just released and you are falling was enough to make me feel like, holy crap, if this were to happen to me, like, even though I'm ready to leave Delish and have been for a while, um, I think that that would still come as a very visceral shock. Funny story. Jude tried donating 100, but accidentally donated 200. Yeah, I tried to donate 100, and then Venmo was like, please confirm your bank account information before the transaction goes through. So I confirmed it, and then I sent it again, and then I looked in my history, and it like said twice. And I thought about asking Zach for a hundred of it back, and then I was like, they probably need it more than I do right now. So, um, I don't know if they get unemployment for the government. I'm not sure. Yeah, they you get unemployment. You get laid off. Yeah, and um. They probably have some sort of severance, but hers is refusing to bargain over their severance packages as a union. So it's like each individual who has been laid off has to basically handle that with HR, which is just, hers is basically functioning like we have no union. It's you very frustrating. We don't have a contract, but we have a union, and there are certain things you are not allowed to do when your workplace is unionized, such as lay off people without consulting the union. I don't know if they made me sign anything. Fun fact, we don't get paid for our video appearances, so probably not. The whole reason that Bon Appetit got canceled was because they were paying their POC talent different rates, lower rates, than their white counterparts. But the hilarious joke on all of us who are staff at Hearst is we don't get paid anything for our video appearances. So, which one's worse? You have racism on the one hand that results in exploitation, and then you just have straight exploitation on the other side. So... At the end of the day, it's all exploitation. We are not paying union dues until there is a contract in place. So the Writers Guild of America East has not been compensated for any of the amount of money they've spent on unionizing us on attending these bargaining sessions. It's created a lot of internal strife over at the WGAE. There have been a section of the WGAE who began to campaign against unionizing digital shops like Hearst Media because they just think that it's not worth it. So it's it's taxing. If I left Delish, I would not want to stay in food media. I wouldn't mind making my own video, but I also wouldn't rely on my own channel being like the sole source of income. What I make on here is probably enough. If I, if I ramp it up to full time, it's probably enough to like pay rent and probably all of my food expenses, so enough to survive, but then I would have to think about health insurance and all of that, you know? So I'm not even gonna think about it right now because honestly, I have grandma to take care of and I just can't even imagine any other big fluctuations in life circumstances right now. It's 
not even overwhelming. It's just not even imaginable. It's not on my radar mentally right now. Um, but you know, like in the event that I do get laid off and or fired or rage quit on the spot, which are all possible, um, then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. They don't teach you about union in high school. They don't want to teach you about union in high school. They also don't want to teach you about the true history of like what went down between the US government and the Black Panthers. They don't want to tell you that the US government killed all of these activists. Um, they don't want to tell you all the countries that the US government has messed with and what dipped their. The Philadelphia Police Department. I don't know anything about that. The 1985 move bombing? The 1985 move bombing? Move was a uh, organization that was a. Uh... You know, I can't hear you from here, right? If you want to talk, you should come over here. If you don't want to talk, you can just drop it in the chat. But Aaron's talking to me about a 1985 bombing where the Philadelphia police just dropped bombs outside a neighborhood and killed 200 people. No. Killed 11 people, oh. 250 people homeless. Oh, okay. Killed 11 people, 250 people homeless. All of the history you do not get taught. You learn later in life. I was thinking about this the other day when I was walking to grandma's. I was like, huh, school was a lie. <laughs> they brainwash you with all of this useless information, and it's pretty much like, Useless information like science and math that is useless unless you really do want to become a scientist or a mathematician or some sort of engineer, but like history is propaganda. This is the neighborhood the Philadelphia I'm Police show Department the bombed. Philadelphia move bombing. Yes. Does, is that a uh, war zone in uh, Eastern Europe or is that uh, the United States from a police action? I mean. Observational holiday. Go fuck yourselves. A day of observation, <laughs> reflection, and recommitment. This country's a joke! This country is a joke! just has an OnlyFans t-shirt. He does not have an OnlyFans. He keeps spreading this fake news. Everybody who watches the Delish videos and sees that shirt is like, what's Aaron's in OnlyFans? Maybe it is time for him to act, like actually get one. You know? What kind of content would you put up on your OnlyFans? My dick. I don't think they want to see your dick. My <laughs> Definitely not your balls. My asshole. Nope, not that either. Thank you. I was thinking more of like video game snapshots or something, but where else would you live though? Canada? I don't know. I've been fantasizing about Europe. One day. What do you guys want me to do after I leave Delish? I don't speak German though, no.
Okay, see, Project Fashion, that's a great OnlyFans idea. Just me being the jealous third wheel. Yeah, OnlyFans was actually not supposed to be, be, be for porn, actually. It was like, just bespoke content, and then people turned it into like a porny platform, and then OnlyFans started like shutting down the porny content, and everybody was like, but why? It was your best performing content. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. We keep trying to lie to ourselves that we don't want what we actually want, and then we give ourselves what we actually don't want, and then we do it long enough that we forget what we do actually want, and then we become strangers to ourselves, and we become sad, but we don't know why, and then we have to go to therapy. How about that? Mmm! Ireland! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, the pull-out method doesn't work because most people don't pull out on time. Um, also not effective for STDs. Uh, I, I am not opening my own restaurant ever. Unfortunately, that's just not going to happen. She doesn't want to lose all of her money. I, I don't want to lose all of my money on a restaurant. But it's also because I don't really believe in the restaurant as a concept anymore. I will definitely take a break, but I don't think taking a break will help me figure it out. I think I'm one of those people who can figure things out while I do things, and then I check off what I don't like and don't want to do again. So many options. Thank you all. Um, I could write. I don't know if I would do well in long form writing. Another editor from a much smaller press reached out. Surprisingly, exa almost exactly to the day, one year after the first editor reached out from Simon & Schuster, which is one of the big fives. I don't really want to publish anything with the big fives. I just feel like whenever you sign anything with someone big, it's just, if you're not looking for money or fame or exposure, and I don't think I am, there's no point in signing with a big guy. I would love to do a pop-up event, actually, and I would want it to be more like, um, interactive with the diners and not just me serving them food because I'm not like I'm not a great chef I can be very creative but I know my strengths and weaknesses I'm not the most delicious food producer I'm just the most creative food producer or at least among them um, so lots to think about for sure Jenny, I think we are all very hard on ourselves. I would love to travel with Fred, but I don't think he would be into it, sadly enough. I would love to have a cat one day who loves to travel. That would make me so happy. I've seen those videos on the dodo where the guy just travels with his cat on a leash or in a backpack and the cat's like having the time of his life and I'm like, where do I get a cat like that? But I love Fred. He's just not a travel cat. Are you satisfied, Aaron? Do you need more food? Okay. The fun part, y'all, is doing exactly this. The fun part is daydreaming of what you want to do. 
the actual part of, of doing what you want to do might not actually be fun. Adrian just says drugs? You want me to just do drugs? I can just do drugs. Jennifer, I have. There has been a budget eats where I've gotten food from the farmer's market to mimic a box that usually the South Carolina food share mails out to its recipients. And then I supplemented it with ingredients from the Delish Test Kitchen that were left over from the pandemic to kind of simulate my own food pantry box. Because I wasn't obviously going to go to a food pantry and take a box for myself. I don't, I'm not gonna take it from a family who needs it, but I did simulate one. Drugs will be bad for my skin. Wow, is that why my skin went to shit during the pandemic? Did too many drugs in isolation. Hi, Latavia. I would love to join a food commune. Are you kidding? Maybe I should just create a cult. What should our cult be? Jennifer, I would consider that. That would be cool. We are like the most lax cult ever. We don't even have a normal praising schedule. You don't even know when I go live half the time. I'm eating mushy beans with some fonio that we cooked on a few lives ago together with some uh, stir-fried and air-fried asparagus with olive oil, salt, pepper, and lemon juice. Environmental development. Kathy, I think our environment is a little past development. I have not heard that song, no. Didn't even know Johnny Depp really sang anymore. I think we should all just have an altar to Fred and we take turns petting him and giving him treats. And that's, that's it. What do you think, Fred? Are you game? Would you like to be a god? A god among men? So the editor that I met with yesterday has apparently watched some of these lives 
and she asked me if I still do the boldings, and I said no, but we have mom's wind chime now. And sometimes when I take a utensil out from the bins over there, by accident, I will hit it. Or maybe I'll just hit it intentionally. Definitely enjoyed the walk. Definitely enjoyed finally deciding on one thing to do and doing it. The thing about anxiety is that it paralyzes you and it makes you unable to act. So being present for me is to choose one thing and to do it and trying to be mindful of it. So I did my best to walk outside and to return to my old habit of taking photos of things that I found interesting and um, just trying not to worry about whatever was outside of the walking. Grape Skunk, fantastic name, asks, June, are you a nihilist? What do you guys think? Am I? Yes, jellyfish, you still have time for veggies. <laughs> Guys, I just don't know about books. I'm just not a book person, you know? I don't really read them, so I don't have, like, a personal connection to them. But the editor I was talking to was like, books are very important to her, you know? She, she writes all over them, and she needs the physicality of a book. I'm... That part of me has, like, retrograded. never been to a cuddle fest. Um, I don't know how comfortable I would be with that because I don't like to cuddle with people that I don't know. How would you do, how would you describe what nihilist is? Exactly, Megan. What is a nihilist? I could do a newsletter. Everybody's doing a newsletter these days. Everybody loves newsletters. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could be just your photos and maybe a description is exactly what my Instagram is, isn't it? Here's the thing that I brought up to the editor yesterday and to the editor last year from Simon & Schuster. Who is my audience? Who am I writing this for? And are they the same people who will buy this book? So for example, last year from Simon & Schuster, they wanted me to develop like a cookbook, very Budget Eats oriented cookbook. And I'm like, listen, the whole premise of Budget Eats is not recipes. And also trying to cook as many meals as you can with $25. Hardcover cookbook, cookbooks these days go for $36, $45, $50, who is the audience who is going to be buying that cookbook? Certainly not the ones who need it the most. And that's always something that I come back to whenever somebody pitches me to write a book is who is going to be buying this book and do I like them? Do I have a common language with them? Because otherwise, why would I write a book when they're not the people I want to speak to, speak with?
I think I agree with RS. I think nihilism means no value, no meaning inherently in the universe. Um, and by extension, Jennifer could be right that that would lead someone to have belief in nothing. When I was chatting with the editor yesterday, I said, I think I am a nihilist, but there is hope within me, and that's why my existence is so miserable sometimes. Is because I do have this core amount of hope that is at great odds with our society, which seemingly really has no true value or meaning. Um, so I think I would prefer to be a nihilist completely and totally because then I would be freed. <sighs> but uh, I am only human and exist in contradiction. Your first job was union, Eileen. Does that mean that your first job was organizing unions or that your first job was unionized? <laughs> Those are kind of different. Maybe I should go work for a union. Exactly, Debbie. I don't think that a lot of the things that I do lends itself well to book form. That's the thing. So then we would have to reimagine what constitutes a book. Or we reformulate the book. Which could be exciting, but also very adventurous. Yeah, I think Jennifer, you're right. I think I do believe in myself, which is the Achilles heel in my nihilism. It's not a true nihilism, unfortunately. Sandy, I think that is a good idea to have an app that will let you mishmash um, budget eat style meals. But uh, I don't want to develop it. It would bring me no joy. Bye, Essia. I don't know if that's how I say your name, but thank you for joining. If I were a nihilist, you're right, I wouldn't really care about whether the book made sense, but I also wouldn't care about the book, right? <laughs> Period? I wouldn't care about anything, right? And it also sounds like publishing is very convoluted. Like there are apparently bidding wars, options for the book. Uh, it just sounds very, I would then have to get an agent. It's a whole thing. I don't want whole things in my life anymore. I just, I, do, I only want snacks. I don't have time for a three hour meal that costs $700. Patty, I don't think I made kombucha. 
You mean the tapache with the pineapple rind? It was okay. It was like kind of rubbery. Like when you um, drink IPA beers and they taste like rubber tires, it definitely had that. Adam, I think you're misunderstanding me, buddy. The whole thing is I don't want to believe in anything. That would be the ultimate freedom for me. So it's not like I'm trying to believe in everything. It's like I'm trying to believe in nothing, right? My goal is nihilism. I'm not there yet. I also think nihilism is on par with, like, Buddhist enlightenment in a lot of ways. Fake news. What? right now he keeps talking from the other room and not really engaging you can't just say fake news Aaron in our last agreement over email you requested that I not point the camera in your direction and I requested that you not interrupt the right lives without talking to me beforehand so why do I uphold my end of the bargain when you don't I'm trying to not be a bitch, y'all. It's just in my nature to react to things that don't make no sense, though. Also, Jill C says, also, I think if you were a sociopath, it would be easier to be a nihilist. Can't picture you wanting to go there, though. Can you train yourself to be a sociopath? Can you? <laughs> My Instagram is kind of a blog, Karen. Yeah. Isn't everybody using Instagram as a It started out as a blog, didn't it? And then it just turned into a marketplace. And now everybody is selling shit on there. Some of it is cool shit. Most of it is not. The tea you made in the last live looked tasty. Is it the ginger tea in the pot? Is it this one? It's just ginger and water. Um, if you're talking about the matcha soba, this one, that's from Harney and Sons. It's the buckwheat matcha. Work in non-profit, uh-uh, 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 <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> I don't know about that. You're gonna have to give me a very good non-profit organization to work for because shit is messed up in some non-profits, y'all. I would rather work for a for-profit organization that has its shit together and isn't completely evil and hopefully doesn't exploit me the same way that corporate media tends to. Um, that would be nice. Um... I do yawn when other people yawn. I even yawn when Fred yawns. Is that normal? Do you yawn when your pets yawn? Adam, I feel like you are judging me immensely. Were you a therapist in a past life and now you're just diagnosing me with shit? That's fine, I don't mind it. I just feel like there's a very particular dynamic that we have here. Ooh, NPR. NPR would be nice. <laughs> Nonprofit would make you a sociopath. 
I think so too. <laughs> I will say that this asparagus concoction with my beans is fucking delicious. Like the acidity and the saltiness of the asparagus is kind of seasoning the under seasoned mushy beans and the kind of like tender, crunchy, supple moisture of the asparagus with the complete creaminess, sauciness of the beans. And then you have like a pop of caramelized garlic. I think this meal costs all of maybe like five bucks for the whole batch. Oh, maybe more with the olive oil, but I didn't pay for the olive oil, so. I don't have a video on kimchi, but other people do. It's not hard to make kombucha, it will just take a long time and a lot of patience and babying it every day. Um, I don't have time to make food for my cat. I just make bone broth to supplement the cat food. But I think for people who are already having trouble meeting food security for themselves, they probably don't have time to make it either because they're probably working all the time. There's just so much systematic bullshit that goes on that it's like you can meet a demand but it might not actually help the people you're trying to help because that's not the thing that's causing their lives to be so bad. It's like this much bigger thing that you can't actually help. Are we talking shit about Julia Child? I know nothing about her beyond the movie, so... What tea are we spilling on Miss Julia Child? Are we, like, tearing down an icon right now? Laura. Friends, partners, associates, they can communicate whichever way they want. You just have to establish what works. I asked for email because that's a searchable text-based format that I can refer back to and say, see, we had this thing. She was a spy for the USA. On what country, France? No big cheesecake, sounds really good. Guys, speaking of cheesecakes, my supermarket had eight ounce tubs of Philadelphia cream cheese on sale, two tubs for $9.98. $5 per half pound of cream cheese is now considered a sale price. That used to be the original price. Sale price used to be $2.50 or $2.99 per eight ounces. What is happening? I don't think I can afford to eat cream cheese anymore. It's scary. First it was the eggs, then it was the che cream cheese. Tomorrow we will have no cheesecakes. Sandy, I will disagree. Store brand is not the same. It does not, it does not behave the same during the cooking process. So when I worked in a restaurant, we always used Philly cream cheese. It's because Philly cream cheese is able to be um, beaten and whipped into a smooth consistency with no clumps or clots or chunks. Store brands, always have chunks. Even if you beat it forever, it will have like these tiny, tiny, tiny little 
breadcrumb size clumps in there which does not give you that smooth, even, buttery mouthfeel. And I'm not sponsored by Philadelphia Cream Cheese, although, you know, I don't know who they're owned by. I, I wouldn't mind a sponsorship by Philadelphia Cream Cheese because I truly do believe they have the best cream cheese on the market. They are the name brand. And I believe in them. As a product, I have experienced their superiority. Craft, fuck, they're owned by Craft. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. Which is part of Heinz. Which is part of what? Craft Heinz is the same company. Craft Heinz is the same company. Yes. Oh my lord. I'm not making cream cheese, y'all. I might as well go milk a cow at that point. Might as well go buy a cow. Might as well go live on a farm. <sighs> if I quit soon enough, there will be no future for Budget Eats. <laughs> I don't think alpaca milk is drinkable, y'all. I've never heard of such a thing, and I think by the way that our species like to exploit other species and resources, we would have known by now if alpaca milk were any good. How Julia Child went from World War II spy to beloved celebrity chef. Huh! <laughs> Is this real news? Does Wikipedia say this? Interesting. I don't see the word spy in the body of the Wikipedia entry on Julia Child, but there are four articles that reference her spy days and spy secrets and spy craft and spying and intelligence. Fascinating. Once again, you have taught me something new that I had no clue I would like to know. Who do you think I'm spying for? What would be the biggest surprise if he found out I was spying for something, someone? What would I spy for Fred on even? What does Fred even... Fred is just on the floor in a mermaid pose. Wish he could have seen it. Mmm. Putin. Mmm. I don't speak Russian though. Definitely would work to my defense as a spy, though, if I don't speak the language. Bye, Eileen. Hello, Montreal. Tofu puffs are so good. Ashley, what did you cook them in? Did you cook them in something super saucy? Or did you put them into soup? They would taste fucking 
fantastic in a chowder, I think. Has to be saucy, somehow. I have not tried camel milk. Uh, I don't know if I will get to. Is it good? Have you tried it? I think that's it for tonight. I think that's it. I think I'm gonna try to get Fred to come over for a treat. You guys have now discovered that I'm a spy for someone. And therefore we must end our relationship now. little slaps tonight, monster. He's a boss. He's a boss. Here, come say bye to the peeps. Oh my lord. You toothless little monster. Everyone, have a great night. Have a great week. Stay hydrated. Take your vitamins. The usual bullshit, you know. And uh, cultivate your inner nihilist so that perhaps they may bring you some peace in times of confusing noise and chaos. <laughs>